welcome to Crafty Music Tips. In this video, I'm going to talk about three main parts to setting up a microphone. It's stated in the obvious, but unless you've actually learnt it, you're not going to know. So, here's what you need to do. Test, test, check, check. Okay, so you need four particular items. One is the mic stand itself. You need a microphone. You also need a mic clip to be on the mic stand, which sometimes it will be already on the mic stand, but just in case it's not, have a mic clip, and you need the cable. Okay, so the first step is when you grab the mic stand, what I usually like to do, you can do this in any steps really, but I just like to get the feet nice and set up. That way it can be on the ground and then you can adjust accordingly from there. If you're adjusting this part, like in the air, it's just annoying. So you get it down on the ground. So you'll notice when I'm adjusting with these tightening mechanisms that I'm actually undoing first in order to make it nice and easy. That's with all of the tightening mechanisms. I'm not forcing anything. You've got this here to be able to adjust like this. If you force it, what happens over time, the thread will bust. So every time that you're adjusting, make sure that you're undoing first and then redoing it. Just helps the longevity of the stand. And you can also adjust height-wise. You can also adjust the bottom. Okay, so we're about to chuck the mic clip in just before we do. Make sure that it's at a good height. You know, if I'm sitting down or still like this, this would be a pretty good height. One other quick important thing about where you're adjusting the length of these parts, it's pretty easy to get lopsided. See how this is potentially going to be in the way of people? So if this is where you wanted it, what I would do is always be, I'd be looking at having an equal-ish distance on either side of this boom part. Not all mic stands are booms, by the way. Boom meaning that it's got this boom area. Some are just straight stands. But yes, sometimes I see people doing that or this. This isn't offensively wrong, but like I said, you just want to have a good even-ish amount of distance between the two, just so that if you have a really heavy microphone on this side, that the weight doesn't Make it go droopy. Okay, now we're ready to actually put the mic clip on. And the microphone in. And now we're ready for part two, which is plugging in the microphone into the sound desk. And for this step, you'll need something to plug into, whether it'll be a busking style amp or a mixing desk of some kind. I'm using a Soundcraft UI24 iPad digital mixer. But if you're working from an analog traditional style mixing desk or amp, then apply the same principles. So what do I do? I plug in here, or do I plug in at the sound desk? Which one do you reckon? I don't know. I prefer doing it at the sound desk first. I suggest you do as well. Come with me, I'll show you why. Now, as you can see by this digital technology here, I don't have a traditional sound desk, but I do need to plug it into something. So here, this is my stage box here. Plugging it in to channel two because I have labeled my second channel as the channel that I want. It's very important to label. And the reason why I'm plugging in at this end is because if I plug in at the microphone first, then I'll potentially have all of this unwanted slack all around here. And the spaghetti incident, sadly not a Guns N' Roses album, will be potentially really annoying. Okay, so I'm plugged in here and I'm about to unravel it towards where the microphone is. Make sure when you're unraveling that you don't get any knots in the cable. If you do, make sure you just undo the knots first. And also when you're unraveling, try and think where is the least amount of human traffic going to be so that there'll be less opportunity for a tripping hazard. Just to reiterate my point before, see here, I've got a little bit of excess that if I want to move over here or up here, then I have that excess to play with. If I plugged it in at this end, 
had the excess over at the sound desk, then I wouldn't have that room to move. Now I see some people just do this, they, they'll plug straight in, and actually, that worked out kind of nicely, it looks kind of neat. But what I might see pretty often is this, dangling for a guitar headstock or a guitar neck to do that. Okay, so I don't plug straight in. What I like to do is just do maybe two or three loops around. So we're going to loop, loop, like so. I've seen people do way too many loops. I've seen people do not enough. In my opinion, just a few is good. Here we go, just nice and neat. A few loops around here just makes it look nice and neat. And if you do that on a bunch of different microphones, so much better than the potential spaghetti effect that you can have around the stage. Okay, step three, getting sound. For this step, you'll need either a working busking amp of some kind or a mixing desk that's plugged into a speaker. So what is the most important thing first is to check that you've got signal. It's signals, Jerry, it's signals. Don't have anything on and blaring for others to hear. You wanna be looking at a signal first. So as you can see here, if I'm talking into the microphone, la, 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 check, one, two, we've got a level there. And so the best thing to do for whoever's testing is to do the loudest noise possible that will be going through that microphone. That way there'll be no surprises and no super loud noises. So to understand the next bit I'm about to demonstrate for you, you need to know that there is three different types of volume controls on a mixing desk. The first is gain, which means how much volume is going into the desk. The second is the channel volume, which is how much volume is going into the master, which then the master control controls how much volume for all of the channels that's going out to the speaker. Now the best way to check that you've got the most optimum level is by checking your gain structure, which means how much volume is going into your sound mixer. So in my contraption, you've got two different levels. You've got how much volume is going in, and then you've got how much volume is going out to the speakers. So this is how much volume is going in. If I go, hey, 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 that's pretty loud, and uh, I, I don't want to go any higher than that very important because you can have too much volume going into the mixer which will be really distorted and crackly and ugly sounding or you can have not enough which means that you'll potentially just get lots of hiss okay so now we're ready to check the volume of the speakers we're currently muted and the volume of the channel and the master is down all right so next step is to unmute and I guess you can turn the master up or the channel up, up to you really, just one at a time. I'm gonna put my master up to a conservative level. Hello, hello, hello. Not hearing anything because even though the master's up, the channel itself is not up. Okay, so now I'm turning the channel up. Hello, 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 hello. Check one, two. Okay, what I would do is I would have somebody somehow monitoring what it sounds like out in the audience area so that it's not too loud, too boomy, not loud enough, etc. Okay, so let's summarize here quickly with a bit of a checklist. You got your part one, which is setting up the microphone stand correctly with all of the little bits and pieces that will give you the most optimal mic stand position. And then you've got step two, which is where to plug in the microphone first and where you leave your excess cable. And you've got step three, which is how to effectively get a sound. Remember, make sure that you do it in a safe way where you don't have anything that's potentially gonna make really unexpected loud noises. Now, if you have any questions related to what I've talked about, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you don't have a fancy iPad digital mixer and you just have an actual traditional mixer with actual faders and buttons and stuff, well then, this is what it'll look like for you. So I hope that was a helpful video for you. My name's Crafty. Check out a bunch of the other Crafty Music Tips 
various helpful music tips videos out there on this YouTube channel. If that's still not enough, I've got a few helpful free resources for you that I'll just leave a link for below here. I won't get into it now. If free stuff is something that's interesting for you, go check these out. I'll see you in another video really soon. My name's Crafty. Wherever you are, I hope it's rocking.